Uh, welcome to our first uh, virtual summer school. Before we start, I have some housekeeping items that I just wanted to go through with you. So the webinar will take about an hour and all attendees will be placed on mute. So if you have any questions during the presentation, you can enter them in the Q&A window so that the presenters can address them throughout the webinar. And to access the Q&A section, simply move your cursor to the bottom of your live screen video box and locate the Q&A icon. Click and then type away. Uh, please don't enter questions into the chat box. You'll have access to the recording of this webinar. Uh, will be available on our YouTube channel in about um, the next, I suppose, in the next five days or so. And there will be a few interactive poll questions throughout the the webinar, which will hopefully keep you engaged. And um, we'd really appreciate if you take part in this. Um, you may have got a, a poll as you arrived into the into the room. So I'm going to go around and introduce the panel so you know who we have here. We have uh, Catherine Red Dr. Catherine Redmond, who's the Programme Director for the General Nursing. Dr. Suja Samanahadan, who is the Programme Director for the Children's and General Nursing. I have Peter Donnelly, who is our Mental Health Nursing Programme Director. And I have Lorraine Carroll, who's there for midwifery. Um, I have a few other people here in the room as well. We've got some students. I've got Megan Bro, Shane Burton, Claire Ryan, Sabine O'Connell, um, looking through all my students, Nina, uh, Nina Halla and Arafa Olesikun. And I have a couple of other staff here as well. I can see Gronia, Marcelina and Liz and Justin who will be here as well. So to allow you to formally open the, the webinar. I'm going to hand you over to Professor Jared Feely, who is our Dean and Head of School, and he's going to formally launch the, the event. Good afternoon, everybody, and you're all very welcome to this, uh, our uh, um, Nursing Midwifery and Health Systems presentation for the summer school. Uh, and as uh, you will know and may have seen from the website, the webinar is aimed at secondary school students, primarily those who are interested in nursing and midwifery. And uh, through, throughout the webinar, you'll hear, hear an overview of our various programs, including the general nursing program, the mental health nursing program, the children's and general program, and the, the, the um, midwifery program. Um, uh, you, will, you will hear the directors of the programs outline the, the various elements of the program and what you might study in the program. Uh, I want to particularly welcome the students who, who may be in transition year or indeed who may be in leaving set year, but certainly those who will be thinking about nursing next year. Uh, and also any parents, career guidance counsellors, and indeed any international visitors to a website. So I hope you'll find that the webinar will be useful and will give you plenty of information about our school and particularly about our undergraduate degree programmes. Uh, I think you'll um, be very, very much aware if you've been listening to the news in the last three months, you'll be very, very much aware of the role of nurses and midwives, uh, particularly nursing at this time with the, with the national, um, I guess we call it the COVID-19 emergency crisis uh, and how nurses have been mobilised and how the, the health services and have been mobilised to deal with this crisis and in particular to treat people who've um, succumbed to the adverse effects of COVID-19 infection and who've had to be hospitalised and those also in residential care homes who've had to be hospitalised. So nurses are playing a key frontline role in the care of people who've, uh, who've had COVID-19. So, so I think nursing will be very, very much in the public mind at this time. I'm um, not going to say a whole, a whole lot more except to wish you a very enjoyable summer school and if you're, if you're joining in some of the other activities in the summer school I hope you'll enjoy them as well and get to know a little bit about our university and our campus. But in the meantime uh, I'll hand you back to Susanna. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Jared. Um, so as Jared mentioned, um, so uh, as I mentioned we should take about an hour um, this morning or this afternoon and we go over the details of the programs, the programs we have on offer, the number of places and um, pathways into our programs and then there'll be an overview of each of our four uh, honours bachelor's programs. Um, we will take some questions at the end of each section 
and then what we'll do is we will have an overall Q&A session and that will be followed by a virtual tour which we have of our clinical skills labs which is one of the areas that you'll hear more about as the session progresses. So um, I'll be handing over to my uh, program director colleagues in a few moments but I'm just going to talk you through our the points the places and the pathways as we call this section which is really I suppose uh, the nitty gritty. Um, you might want to take a screen grab of that if this is something you're interested in. So we have four bachelor's degree programmes, um, the BSc Nursing, General Nursing. There are 167 places on this programme. It's our largest programme and the points last year ranged from 398 to 499 and it is a four-year degree programme. So the majority of our programmes are four-year degrees, with one exception, which is the next programme, the BSc Nursing Integrated Children's in General programme. We have 42 places on this programme. And last year, the points went from 40, 462 to 577. And the course is four and a half years, so slightly longer than the others. And you will hear more about that later as to why that is. Our next degree programme is the BSc Nursing Mental Health Nursing and Peter Donnelly will be speaking to you about that. We have 26 places on this programme, it's a much smaller programme, but it has grown over the last couple of years. And last year the points ranged from 379 to 466. And the programme is again four years in length. This is followed by our BSc Midwifery. Um, there's approximately 21 places on this each year. And last year, the points ranged from 409 to 540. And again, it's a four year degree program. So I mentioned there's a few pathways into our programs. I suppose the um, I suppose the largest cohort of students would be coming straight from the leaving search through the CAO application process. And then across the, the other entry pathways, um, the mature students, sorry, the QQI, the DARE and the HEAR schemes. This group would make up, these groups would make up about 30% of our student population in the undergraduate section. And I'm gonna go through each of these and just explain a little bit about, about them and their entry requirements, okay? So starting with the CAO entry requirements, you require Irish, English, maths and one laboratory science subject and then two other uh, recognized subjects. If you're coming from the, the north or from the, um, the UK, the A-level, we require passes, um, grade C or above, in six of the recognised subjects, of which two must be at minimum grade C or above at A-level. Um, and again, this is a lot to remember in this. You will be able to see this, as I said, in the recording um, that will be available in, uh, by the end of next week. But if you want to take a screenshot of this, um, you're more than welcome to do so. So the next uh, group I'd said I'd talk about is the mature students. So I'm not sure if any of you are mature students, um, but I suppose it's also good to know that there is a mature student entry route in case you, it doesn't work out for you this, this time or you go to work for a couple of years or maybe pursue something else. But the requirements for that, that you must be 23 by the 1st of January, the year in which you're applying, and you must apply for the CAO. So you need to apply through the CAO, although you're a mature student, and you need to apply by the 1st of February. And then you must register with the Public Appointment Service to take what's called the NMBI assessment test. Now, the NMBI is, stands for the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland. And this is our governing body, our registry body, and um, they have an assessment test. So then the you register to take the test and you take the test and then the applications are based on the results of that test and the offers would go out in July. So as a mature student, you would know in July if um, you've got a place on one of our programmes. Another route in is through the QQI or FETAC um, entry um, pathway. Um, this is for, it's available on, competitive basis to students who satisfy each of the following requirements that you must have passed any of the one of the approved QQI and FETAC level five awards achieving distinctions in a minimum of five modules. Now I'll be honest 
there are a high number of people who satisfy that requirement and that means that the places have always been allocated on random selection so I think the points um, or the, the score is 380 but obviously there's a lot more people score 380 than we have places so it is an entry route in but it, it can be hard and there's um, but I suppose it is good to know that if in you do do a QQI course that there is a route into the bachelor's degree program then afterwards. And I've listed uh, some useful links here for you to click through to. Um, so the first one is in relation to the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland and their website, as I said, they're our, our governing body. Our, um, our, we, our students will register as students and as registered nurses with the NMBI. Um, there is information there on applying as a mature student um, for QQI students and for students on the DARE and HEAR schemes. Um, so you may be familiar with those from uh, speaking to your guidance counsellors. Again, the entry criteria are all there. So you can just click on those to go through them. And and just one final pathway or that you should be aware of is that quite often um, the points for children's nursing and midwifery in particular will be quite high and one route in is to become a registered general nurse and to take up um, further study after qualifying as and undertaking a higher diploma in either midwifery children's nursing or mental health nursing they vary in length um, for courses they are either 12 or 18 months in duration and you must be a registered nurse to apply so it will be on completion it's some people would call it a conversion course um it's not commonly used but i suppose if you're familiar with that term um it would also give you the the registration with the nursing and midwifery board of ireland so that you could be either a registered general nurse and a children's nurse or a general nurse and a midwifery nurse and uh, or even an intellectual disability nurse and a children's nurse. So they're um, the main routes to that are open to you. Okay. So before I move on, I'm just gonna check and see if there's any questions related to me. I don't know, Justin can maybe give me a hand with this bit. Yep, there's just one question there of how you should know whether to become a nurse or not. And I think I would probably defer to one of my nursing colleagues. Maybe one of the students would be able to give their yeah. a view. Good idea. How do you know you want to become a nurse? Um, it's a question that maybe we sometimes don't ask ourselves. I mean, uh, I, I can take you back to 1975, but that's way, way too long in my history when I started decided I was going to become a nurse. I think it's something that you 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 develop an interest in um, and your decision about, about whether, you know, I, I, you decided you're going to become a nurse very often is, is, is an interest in maybe a family member or maybe you know somebody who's a nurse or a friend or somebody who is you know an older sibling and, or, and so very often you know through hearing other people's accounts of what it means to be a nurse and what it's like to be a nurse but there's probably no real answer to that and sometimes that's a an instinct more than a rational decision but it can of course be a rational decision and um, um, for me at the time, I, you know, I had done my leaving in 1973 and I hadn't gone to university and I was sort of thinking about it for a while. And it was sort of through one or two friends at the time that I was sort of hanging out with that, that sort of were thinking about it. And I said, I'll think about it too. So it was a little bit of um, maybe sort of peer, not peer influence, but just figuring out, is this something for me? And and, and that's how I decided. So it's very often a combination of, you know, um, you know, just talking it out with folks uh, and and um, thinking yourself about whether you think you'd be, you know, suitable to be a nurse. And in some ways, you don't really know till you become a nurse yourself. Uh, and and uh, and uh, so there are, there are very often just personal interpersonal reasons, but there are also other reasons. But I don't think I've answered the question, how do you know um, that you want to become a nurse? I think, again, maybe, you know, some of the students are better placed. I'm just giving my own experience of, of all those years ago, but maybe the students are better placed to answer that now. Thanks, uh, Suzanne. Thanks, Jared.
Uh, we have a couple more questions and then we'll move on. Um, how many total clinical hours do students attend and how many hours do uh, does this compare to other programmes? I think we will answer that as we go through each of the programmes because that is mm -hmm. um, mentioned in the slides of the programmes. Okay, and just one final question before we move on. Is there an opportunity to study abroad? Again, that is answered in the individual program, so we can get okay. through that question. Okay, so I'm going to go back into the sharing the screen and I'm going to hand over. And I'm going to hand over to Dr. Catherine Redmond, who's the program director for the general nursing program. Thank you, Suzanne. Hello, everyone. I'm Catherine Redmond and I look after the general program. Uh, general nursing is about looking after the adult uh, population, but also when you're looking after an adult, they are part of a family, so you will have a role to play in family, um, looking after the family as well. You'll hear the term registered general nurse. So this is a nurse that has completed their four year degree and then registered with that nursing board of Ireland. And during your degree, you'll be looking at not just the physical um, care of the patient, we look at the psychological and social cultural care needs of the patient as well. So looking at the patient holistically rather than just on the disease or illness that they may have. Next slide. Yeah. So during the um, training, you will learn how to respect the dignity of the person. So this is really important. We have qualities that we do want to promote in our students. So uh, instilling dignity, instilling trust and confidentiality, that you will be professionally responsible and accountable that you will be able to deliver quality practice at the end of care, and that you'll be able to work in a team and collaborate with others. So someone just asked, how much time would you be spending um, on clinical practice? Well, 50% of the four years, that time is spent in UCD, and 50% is spent in clinical practice. So off your time in UCD, um, you will find you start in UCD for the first 12 weeks and then in the second part of the first year, so in second semester, you may go out onto practice for a couple of weeks, come back into UCD for another block time, go back out onto the wards for more practice. So during these times, you are putting into practice what you have just learned in theory and that continues throughout the four years of the programme. So in total, it's half in UCD and half in clinical practice. When you're in UCD, you'll be attending lectures, you'll be using a special platform called Brightspace where everything is uploaded for you. You'll be doing clinical skills training, preparing yourself for your time spent in clinical practice. You'll be using a variety of types of learning, such as problem-based learning and cooperative learning, something called motivational interviewing, which will help your skills with communications with patients. You'll be looking at attending tutorials and learning presentation skills and doing a lot of e-learning work as well. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay, no. Thank you. So this is just showing you a variety of the settings that you will be learning in. So some of the learning will go in such as a standard lecture hall. And you can see one of the lecture halls here in this slide. Then you'll also see to the right of that is a computer lab. So maybe many of you in there looking at some simulations on computer labs. And then we have our clinical skills labs where you may be just working with another colleague in your class on a one-to-one. -one. That colleague could be just sitting beside you as you're taking histories from each other, or they may be acting out as being a patient. So lying in the bed, you can also find uh, that you'd be using mannequins in the bed to help you with some of your clinical skills learning. And you may have actual patients in the bed. So we have actors that come in and act the role of various patients. And that is a very good learning experience where you're learning how to communicate and use all your skills while you're looking after this patient in the bed. Thanks, Suzanne. So when you're doing your clinical practice, you'll be going to a variety of places, but our two main sites are the Matter Hospital and St. Vincent's Healthcare Group. 
but there is a wide variety. So you may be out in clinical placements in areas such as care of the elderly um, patients or in ch child care or in mental health nursing. So even as a general nurse, you will be spending some time looking after patients that have maybe be children or may have mental health issues or even maybe um, in the maternity wards. So you get a wide variety of experiences, but most of your time is spent in the general hospitals, such as the Matter and St. Vincent's. And when you're in UCD, you can see the four years laid out here, that in first year, you're doing a lot of foundation sciences. So principles around biological sciences, social sciences and behavioral sciences, and then also going out on your clinical practice. In second and third year, you're developing more knowledge and uh, applying these to um, your patient groups. So you may be looking after patients with, sorry, different conditions. Uh, so things like nursing and midwifery science. So you might be looking after patients that have problems with the musculoskeletal system or problems with their skin. So there's a whole variety. You use all that background information in stage one to help you with your years two and three. And year four is preparing you for professional practice. So that is kind of a, a general outline of what goes on in your four years of your program. Next slide. And where do you work? You can see, um, you can go to a wide variety of places. So in hospitals, in all the different areas, surgical, medical wards, emergency departments, operating theaters, you could work in the community, working with older people in schools, factories, and you can travel all over the world with nursing. It's a very good profession to have chosen. Thank you. Um, and just to say that there is an option, as I had mentioned, I think it's on one of the slides that you can take an elective in second or third year to do um, a semester abroad. So somebody was asking that question. So there is that option in second or third year to take a semester abroad. And we have places such as Sweden, Malta, Spain, France. So there's a wide variety of places you could choose. And um, if you meet the requirements to be able to go onto those placements. So hopefully we'll see you in 2021 taking the general nursing program. I'm going to pass you over to Megan who is a student that's in second year at the moment, and she will give you her insights into the programme. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, guys. My name is Megan, and along with Claire, Nina and Shane, have just finished second year of general nursing. I chose nursing as I've always loved communication with and helping people, both young and old. I always had an interest in healthcare, seeing as my aunts were nurses, and I had learned first aid through St. John Ambulance. I know that my biggest worry when I first chose nursing, besides fainting in front at the sight of blood, was that I was parting ways with all my school friends. But it wasn't long before I realised that nursing is a great course for getting to know people between clinical skills labs, nursing and midwifery society events and placements you are constantly meeting new people. I think that general nursing is a good option for those of you who are unsure what type of nursing you'd like to do after graduation, like Catherine and Suzanne were saying, in second and third year, we go on specialist placements like pediatrics, midwifery, mental health, and A&E. A typical day in placement involves working closely with a nurse to help patients with activities such as eating and personal hygiene, checking patients' vital signs, and learning about medications and treatments such as oxygen therapy and wound dressings. Some of the favorite parts of my day are communicating with patients and seeing the smile I put on a patient's face when I bring them a cup of tea. Nursing is perfect for practical learners due to all the learning that takes place in the clinical skills labs, which you use daily in placement. Getting out on placement in first year means you're constantly putting your knowledge to use, so it doesn't come as much of a shock to you when you start your internship in fourth year. This past year, I got the opportunity to study abroad, and I was on my Erasmus in Finland, but sadly I had to return home because of the coronavirus. All in all, nursing takes hard work and dedication, so don't worry if you get discouraged sometimes. I just hope you will all love nursing as much as we all do. Feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat and we'll do our best to answer. Thanks guys. Thanks, thank you so much, Megan. Thank you, Catherine. Um, we're going to move on now to the Children's and General Nursing Programme. 
Um, actually, before we do, I should just check and see, is there any questions there? Um, okay, I'll maybe take an easy one first. Um, for this question, can I transfer from general nursing to children's nursing? You can't transfer once you're in a program. And um, what you would do is you would complete your general nursing. And then if you wish to become a children's nurse, you could look at pursuing the higher diploma in, child in children's nursing after that. So we will take care of that. Um, do you need chemistry for the leaving search to do nursing? I, it doesn't need to be chemistry, but it needs to be either physics, biology or chemistry. You need to have one science subject. Um, this question, do you think there's more of a collaborative, com, more of a competitive or collaborative atmosphere? So maybe I would just pass that to Catherine and Megan, if there are any of the other general nursing team who would maybe ask, answer that question. That might be good for, Megan, would you like to answer it, you know, from a student point of view, do you find it competitive or uh, collaborative? I think that it's definitely collaborative. Okay, there we go. Um, we've answered that question. And uh, what would you do if you worked in a research area as a nurse? So I would have very little involvement in this, um, but it's usually working with a, a research team, I think is probably the best way to answer that, that it's with a research team. Um, it may be from a, either from a nursing or a medicine perspective. And, I don't know, Catherine or any of the other team would add more to it than that. Um, sorry, Suzanne. Um, once I will, yeah, sorry. Um, there are a number of opportunities with the research. So if you are a research nurse, you will be working with the team, mainly in the clinical team. You'll be collecting data, analyzing the data and working with them as a team. But then you, can, you will be called as a research nurse. But as a student, there are opportunities like a summer school. So for example, uh, this week, our undergraduate students started a summer a summer research school with uh, with us. We had a, we have four undergraduate students currently undertaking project. So this is kind of a, a helping the student to understand what is what is a research for them and what kind of engagement they can do throughout the summer. So it's kind of we are very supportive from the students all the way to different levels. So you can do summer school as a student. Once you qualified, you can be research nurse. And if you're interested, you can go for a master's by research. And then if you still want to be a doctor like a Catherine Redmond or myself, you can go for a PhD and you will be as a doctor of philosophy and you could teach in the university like a UCD or Trinity. So there are endless opportunities in research. It's a non-stop. It's a non-stop, okay? Okay, thank you so much, Suja. So I think uh, that answers that question there. Yes, it is possible to go into academia after nursing. So we've answered that. I'm going to click that's done. I think we're going to move on now to uh, Suja, um, who's going to give us an overview of the Children's and General Nursing Programme. And I'll move on to the first slide, if that's okay, and unmute myself then. Okay, thanks, Suzanne, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I know there are around 150 people. Unfortunately, we can't see you, everyone, but at the same time, I'm delighted to see that so many people are interested to listen to our program in ECD. So my name is uh, Suja Somanathan. I am the program director for children and general nursing. Um, I just want to ask you a question before I start anything. <laughs> How many of you in these uh, 153 people interested in interacting with the children, adult at all age? And also, I would like to ask another question. Are you curious about how children and adults stay healthy or become ill? Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of interest, Catherine. I think I'm going to take over. <laughs> Sorry. There's a huge interest. Uh, thank you very much for everybody's poll. I think 99% said yes, they are very curious. And then 96% said uh, they enjoy interacting and communicating with the children and adult of all age. Very interesting poll. I'm very pleased to see that. Thank you very much, everyone who participated in the poll. So I'm just wondering, uh, can I have the next slide, please, Suzanne? Thank you. 
Okay, so I just want to highlight what, what is meant by children and general nursing program. So the, the role of the children and general nursing is to foster the health and well-being of individual across the lifespan. So it includes children and their family, and Catherine already mentioned about adults and their families. So it's about offering the holistic care and approach for, for caring for these individuals and their families. It can be in the hospital setting, it can be in the community setting, it can be anywhere. But we are here to, especially children's nurse, you are a registered nurse who is there to look after the children up until age from birth to 18. I know the pediatric hospital, I know many of you may be the pediatric patient before visiting Temple Street or Kremlin Hospital or Thala, you know, but in the main hospital, they take up to 16, but in the communities up to 18. So any age from birth all the way to 18, you look after uh, those, those children and the family. So that is the responsibility of a children's nurse. And then general nurse, as I think Catherine very beautifully mentioned earlier, is about adult across the lifespan and then partnership with their family. So the, the beauty of this, this program, you are getting two registration status being a general nurse, working with adult, being a children's nurse, working with the children and the families. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, so this is the longest program. I know, I, I think I mentioned every year, it, this is like a buy one, get one free. You're getting two degrees, so you probably need to work a little bit harder. So it's a four and a half year program. And then you become registered children's nurse and registered do, uh, uh, general nurse. The dual qualification you will be getting after four and a half years. I probably, now you probably know why we have a length because we need to make sure you get the proper training and education to qualify for the registration program for being a children and general nurse. And we do take up to 42 students per year. And I need to admit um, in, in Ireland, I think in Dublin, we are the most popular uh, university to offer this program, which is a University College of Dublin. And Cork is also, uh, Cork is the top and we are the second uh, because Cork um, uh, University is really um, uh, on the top too. So I um, just want to highlight that we are offering a very good program. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you, Suzanne. Um, so this, I uh, just want to highlight um, majority of the clinical uh, learning experience will take place in uh, the, the world class, I mean, the top, uh, hospitals like uh, Mater University Hospital, St. Vincent Healthcare Group. The child specific, you go to Children Health Ireland at Crumlin. I have a video link. Uh, we will be sharing these slides with you all later. And that video link will bring you to the new hospital site where you will see what is going to be look like in 2023 when we have this world-class hospital is going to open. So I have a feeling people like yourself, you know, you are good joining the program. When you qualify, you will be working with the world class, top class hospital in the country, in the world. So that'll be a fantastic opportunity for you all. And also we have a range of specialist sites across uh, Ireland East Hospital Group, including community site. You go to the John of God for a psychiatric placement. And we also have Erasmus program where we can, you can go, um, as Catherine mentioned, you can go to a number of European countries between the year two and four. So there are opportunity to study abroad. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, just, just want to give you a brief overview. I didn't uh, break it down into year by year, but I just want to highlight, if you go to our, our school website, there is a detailed curriculum um, um, information is available. So please go, uh, go ahead and have a look at the school website for what exactly we teach in the year one, year two, year three, and year four. So when you think about, yeah, uh, when you think about the main program, I think Catherine mentioned very, uh, you know, very clearly in her slides and um, looking at uh, all the year and the behavioral science, social science, anatomy and physiology, psychology, pharmacology, and caring for the children and adults with the diverse healthcare needs. For example, care of a child who has diabetes care of a child who, ha who is, has a respiratory problem like cystic fibrosis, uh, even caring for a little, little uh, baby has a bronchitis. You know, when the flu season comes up, we need to look after the baby with the bronchitis. So there are variety of um, um, healthcare needs will be covered through the program. And also we do focus on management and leadership, quality and safety as well. 
Then I go back to the clinical practice. You will be uh, working with a number of hospitals. So I have to admit, um, you, will, you will be getting the teaching experience from expert lecturers in UCD and also expert clinical practitioners in the clinical site. So they will be uh, working with you um, at the clinical site. We'll be delivering uh, reflective days, workshop together. There are a lot of opportunities to work in collaboration, work as a team, and improve your leadership and management skills throughout the program from all the way from year one to year three, year four. Next slide, please. Thank you. Again, I, I will be repeating myself. I just thought it's important for you to understand we do have a um, number of opportunities. I think Catherine mentioned again in her slides. We have a computer lab system. We have face-to-face -face teaching. We do have a clinical skills lab where we teach a lot of clinical skills. For example, um, uh, oxygen therapy, how to take a blood pressure, how to take a, take a temperature, very basic, but it's important you to get hands-on experience to understand how you do it in the, in the real world. So we do have a, 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 a fantastic facility in UCD. Unfortunately, due, due to COVID-19, we are not able to bring you to the you know, face-to-face um, uh, virtual, but a face-to-face -to tour around the around the campus, and which is uh, you know, which is really really interesting because I was a student of UCD and I always enjoyed being in the campus and going around and seeing the places. So, but this is again virtual, but there will be opportunity for you down the line to go and visit uh, the school itself. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Okay, and another interesting question, why do you want to study with us? Um, I, I want to admit we have a modern lecture theaters. We have a skill laboratories, a very, you know, very purposefully built um, uh, building and a beautiful campus, a computer labs, a clubs and, and social event place. Everything is there. But I know with the COVID-19 again, we are stuck. But I have to admit, uh, being a student of UCD myself, I did a five graduation with UCD. I was a student of UCD for 14 years. I have to admit, it's a beautiful campus to be in. So definitely go and explore UCD. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Yeah. So I, I don't have the student with me, but I just want to uh, highlight. Uh, this is my, one of my students who graduated last year, Evande. So uh, her testimonial, and I'm going to leave it for you to read. That okay? Can I go to the next slide, please? Then, yeah. So this is uh, John Hutchings. He's a Matches student. Uh, the reason I have he is a currently graduate student, and their graduation on the 15th of June. We are going to have a virtual um, conferring ceremony for this uh, cohort group. And the reason I have uh, John. John was a Matches student, and he qualified in genetics before he came and undertook this program. So it's important for people like uh, John or a much student out there to understand it is possible to take nursing, even though you are a much student. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So what I, I really want to highlight, this is my, my last slide. I just really want to highlight this slide, your career opportunities. So completing this program will qualify you as a registered nurse and registered children's nurse and general nurse. And your future um, professional role uh, can be extended beyond clinical practice. I think Catherine also mentioned about number of areas you could work. You could work as a clinical practice staff nurse and you can work as a clinical nurse specialist, a advanced nurse practitioner. And if you're interested in management and leadership, you can go as a clinical nurse manager from level one all the way to level three. You can be assistant director of nursing, director of nursing. And if you're interested in research, you can go to the route of research and education as well. And you can, be, you can do your master's by research, PhD, and then you can come and work with us in ECD. So there are opportunity for you and also, I just want to highlight, because being um, a children's and general nurse, your work opportunity is endless. You can work anywhere in the world. You can go to America, you can go to Canada, 
Australia, anywhere in the world you want to, you will get the job. I, you know, because anywhere you can work, either child or adult uh, sites. And also there are opportunity for a professional education. For example, you can do master's degree, you can do postgraduate degree, and you can come and undertake PhD. So it's uh, so many opportunities for you. So, you, uh, you know, don't ever think that nursing is going to stop you as a nurse, it's not. You know, nursing is going to bring many opportunities for you. Because when I qualified, I worked in Temple Street for 14 years. I was a student nurse, I was a staff nurse, clinical nurse manager level, level, level two, and then I came to UCD after completion of my PhD. So I, I, I'm, the reason I'm saying I'm only in UCD for the last three years, but I worked over 15 years in Temple Street. So there are many opportunities for you. So I just, I'm, I, I, I hope um, you, know, uh, you have enough information and please feel to contact me. I, my details are available via UCD website uh, or through the school. And I think the final slide, Susan. I think I have one more slide, sorry. <laughs> yes, so this is a campus, guys. I know I, we can't take you for the tour, but have a look at the campus. And it's a beautiful sunny day and we should be out there. And then the final slide, last one. <laughs> yeah, I would strongly recommend you to watch the YouTube video. Uh, where I send all my students and myself as a student, I watched that one. It's a really good one and you get a really good campus tour. So I would recommend the YouTube video. And thank you very much everyone and have a good day. Take care. Thank you, Seja. Thank you so much. Um, I think we've time for a couple of questions. We'll have a look and see. Um, so we can answer this one live. Uh, can a general nurse specialize into something more specific like oncology? Um, the answer is yes, they can. Usually they need to have um, a year to two years work experience in the area, but they can specialize in that. Don't know if any of the panel wanted to add anything to that. Um, yeah, Catherine. So, sorry, yeah, there are a number, you could go into diabetes as a specialism. Mm -hmm. or oncology or cardiovascular nursing or there's just so many different specialist uh, programs you can join as a postgraduate um, student after your general nursing degree okay thank you that's done um i don't know if you guys can see these questions so i'm reading them out can yeah. you go on to study medicine in ucd after finishing children or, uh, or midwifery nursing I think they can, um, as a much student, they can try, but they may need to contact UCD Medicine itself. There are opportunities. Yeah, and I think for possibly, the, they may be eligible for the graduate entry medicine. That's um, right, yeah. Probably need to, to contact her colleagues in yeah. this. That's, that's correct. Yeah, graduate entry medicine is the route if they're already a registered nurse. Okay. Um, is it possible to do general nursing and do the, the children's nursing as a one year bachelor's honours course? Uh, so it is possible to do the general nursing and then to go on and do, a, it's not a bachelor's, it, it is at that level, but it's called a higher diploma in children's nursing. So, and I think there were slides on that early on in the, in the webinar, so they'll be available when you see the, the webinar next week. Uh, Suja, this is a question for you, I think, is the course very challenging? It is challenging for any course is challenging, um, especially children in general. You will be rotating between, between three clinical sites, which is Mater, then Vincent's, and Crumlin. So you will be, um, it is challenging, it's a longer program. And um, but it's, it, uh, what I heard from my student, it is quite interesting uh, working between children and adult um, clinical sites. Okay. Thank you so much, Suja. So we will move on to our next presentation. I'm having a bit of a, there we go. So we're going to have an overview of the mental health nursing from uh, my colleague, Peter Donnelly, who's the program director. So Peter, if you want to. Hi, good afternoon, folks. Yep, hope you can hear me here. So hi, good afternoon, folks. Peter Donnelly is my name. So before I dive into mental health nursing, I just want to talk for two seconds about inclusivity. So the School of Nursing and Midwifery and Health Systems and UCD as a whole strives to be a model of inclusion. We respect and value student diversity. Our learning environment is designed inclusively so that it can be accessed, understood and used regardless of student background 
personal circumstances, age or disability. So it's really important to know that. UCD is a university for all where diversity and inclusion is woven into the fabric of all that we do. Students are encouraged to approach staff to discuss learning needs and any information disclosed will be treated with confidentiality and respect. So just important for you to know that. So let's discuss what is mental health. Well, mental health is a way to describe the state of one's mind, feelings, emotions, and coping. It's the balance between social, physical, spiritual, and emotional aspects of life. Mental health impacts on how we manage and make choices in our lives. And mental health is far more than just the absence of mental illness. And it has to do with many aspects of our lives, including how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about others, how we are able to meet the demands of life, what provides us joy and purpose, connection, and a sense of being at ease with the world. As you can see, it's about just living life to the fullest that you can live it. Okay, but what and how will I learn as a mental health nursing student? Well, you learn theory and skills in UCD, practice it in our clinical skills labs with your lecturers and clinical skills tutors, and put it into practice for real in your clinical placements from first to fourth year where you'll interact with patients and clients and be assessed by qualified nurses. So two questions, what does the program look like? What are the subjects? And do students of psychiatric nursing train as one group or are we integrated with other nursing and delivery students? So if you look on the right-hand side here, you'll see under BSc Nursing Mental Health that for each stage or each year, you have specific modules of theory and clinical practice, which are dedicated to learning about mental health nursing. So in stage one, you have foundations of mental health nursing A and B, followed by clinical practice. And in stage two, you have specialist care and mental health across the lifespan and clinical practice and so on. And then as Catherine and Suja have already said, um, you have shared modules, which you will take then with the general and the children in general, and in some cases, the midwifery students also. I won't repeat them, but you can see that there are scientific principles and to do with nursing concepts and values and pharmacology, et cetera. The other thing that's important to know is that you do have the opportunity for electives in years two and three, and the electives are anything of your choosing. So that could be a language or archeology span or art. It's totally up to you. And like the other programs, you also have the opportunity to study abroad. In the case of mental health, we have a relationship with Turku in Finland where you can go. So where are the clinical placements? Well, again, we have uh, arrangements with St. John of God Hospital and with the HSE. So if you're based primarily in St. John of God, you will get your training in the St. John of God Hospital and in their related community services which are really broad and right across Dublin. If you're primarily with the HSC, you'll have places right across the Dublin and uh, healthcare region, community healthcare East, as it's known. When we talk about placements, we talk about core placements and specialist placements. In the specialist placements, that may include coming into contact with clients, for instance, who are mainly adolescents, or it could be a, a placement in the forensic services, such as the Central Mental Hospital. It will be working perhaps with intellectual disability services, in care of the elderly services, or with people who are suffering with eating disorders or with addictions. So it's placements across an array of sites, which are all audited and all approved for nurse training by UCD and the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland. So what's mental health nursing about? What will I learn, for example? Well, you will learn the skills of how to communicate, empathize and support people who are depressed or perhaps hearing voices or feeling anxious or worried, experiencing body images disturbances or eating disorders, or people perhaps who are self-harming, abusing drugs, feeling suicidal, experiencing mood swings, 
such as depression or feeling euphoric. So you will learn the art and the science of collaborating with people in achieving recovery. And recovery is a personal journey for each person towards leading a meaningful and fulfilling life as determined by them, even though they may still experience some symptoms of mental illness. What the program includes, a deep understanding of the science and art of nursing those in distress with respect, with empathy, knowledge, and compassion. You learn transferable skills that will teach you how to manage yourself and others in times of crisis. You learn reflection, self-awareness, and how to care for your own mental health and that of others. You'll interact with people of all ages using a honed communication, de-escalation, psychological and interpersonal skills. Incremental professional training leading to a world recognized qualification. So these are some of the placements and possible sites that you could see. And those are some of the experiences that the people you're looking after may uh, be feeling or suffering. So stress and grief and depression and so forth. So the question, will mental health nursing change me? Yes, we are all changed by life experiences. So you will be challenged, assessed, stretched, but you will also be supported, coached, educated, and you will feel the satisfaction of helping others to achieve their potential as you move towards fulfilling yours. And you will realize that you chose a vibrant, meaningful, personally enriching and satisfying career. This is the mental health team. I'll let you read those through those for a second. And it's important to note that all of your lecturers for nursing subjects are nurses or midwives first. And then we have moved on to become doctors or whatever as well, but just important to know that. Supports. Well, UCD is a massive university and university can seem a bit overwhelming at first to some students due to the enormous campus and the diversity and sheer number of students. But we recognize this and there is always support available, such as we provide an orientation, we connect people with peer mentors, you will be assigned personal tutors, student advisors, clubs and societies and student welfare services are all available on campus. So make the best of your orientation, join in everything, introduce yourself and begin to make new friends. What does UCD have to offer for undergraduate students? Well, I mentioned some of them there, but in addition, we have all kinds of things like healthy eating options on campus, opportunities to get fit. We have the most wonderful gym and a 50 meter swimming pool. We have so many clubs and societies, and of course, there's the Students' Union. So what's health at UCD? Well, it's about being connected. It's about being active. It's about availing of help and support or offering health and support. It's about learning. It's about being healthy, eating healthily, being mindful and sleeping well. Further information can be availed here. So thanks for your attention. If you want to post any questions, do pop them into the Q&A there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, I'll have a quick look and see if we have any questions related to mental health nursing. And I do that by... Sorry, just I don't know how to get the questions popular. They just seem to... Oh, there we go. Okay, I just wonder what kind of career options are available with the mental health degree? Okay, so uh, I think my colleague Suja has beautifully covered this already, but there's basically about two or three streams. So one is that when you qualify as a staff nurse, you can get some experience as a staff nurse, and then you can move into the management stream. So you can become a clinical nurse manager grade one, clinical nurse manager grade two after time, a senior nurse manager, assistant director of nursing, and eventually director of nursing, where you're running a big hospital 
or even an area director of nursing where you're running a large service across sometimes many hospitals. Another stream would be an educational stream where you're moving into uh, like a personal tutor or perhaps moving into a university environment where you're becoming a lecturer. Uh, obviously that will involve further study before you can get there. And a clinical stream is where you look at becoming a clinical nurse specialist. And uh, that can be in addictions, in eating disorders, or in any of the specialist placements that I've mentioned, like psychosis and so on. And uh, then from there, you can move on to becoming an advanced nurse practitioner, which is like a nurse consultant, where you're able to uh, see your own patients, decide on their treatment and care protocols, and basically carry a full caseload. Hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you, Peter. So um, there's a couple of questions that I can probably type answers to you as afterwards. Um, but could the course be triggering if mental health has been an issue in the past, Peter? Yeah, it's really important just to be aware of your own mental health. So for instance, if you are somebody who has suffered with an eating disorder, um, or you may have suffered with an addiction or whatever, it's really important that uh, you let, notify us of those uh, conditions at some point if you feel that you can disclose. Uh, that would be simply in order to try and be aware of your needs if you're on a specialist placement, because it could trigger if you've had an eating disorder and we don't know about that, you don't have to disclose anything to us. And then you're working with young people, adolescents who maybe have an eating disorder and it could stir things up for yourself in that matter. It's not to say that you have to avoid taking on mental health nursing if you've had something like that. If you've recovered, it's absolutely fine, but it could be challenging. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to move on now to the program overview for midwifery and um, if Lorraine is there and Lorraine can take yourself off mute. I'm going to mute myself. So good afternoon to each and every one of you and I'm delighted to introduce to you about the midwifery program that we have here at UCD. So my name is Lorraine Carroll and I'm the program director for the BSC in midwifery. Um, and during this presentation, I'll give you an overview of the midwifery programs that we have here at UCD. Uh, and I've also got two midwifery students on the panel as well, Arafa and Sabine, and we've got Liz, the clinical tutor, and Marcelina as clinical tutor, who are here to answer any questions that you have as well. So next slide, Suzanne, please. So as has already been alluded by Suzanne, uh, we've got a BSc midwifery, which is a four year undergraduate degree. And we've also got the higher diploma, which is an 18 month postgraduate program. So say for example, you felt that you weren't going to, to maybe get the, enough points to get the midwifery degree, uh, the four year BSc midwifery, maybe you might choose to do um, nursing first, a nursing degree first. And then after six months, you can apply for a higher diploma, a 18 months course. Um, so you must be a registered nurse first to do a higher diploma in midwifery. Next slide. So what is the role of a midwife? What does a midwife do? So midwives specifically work with women and babies. They support and care for women during pregnancy, labor and birth and after birth as well. Midwives help women to stay healthy during pregnancy and can provide sole antenatal care, so care during their pregnancy, um, especially if the woman is healthy and has an uncomplicated pregnancy, or it could be in consultation with an obstetrician um, who is the doctor that looks after women um, during pregnancy. And during that time, the midwife is checking on the baby's growth, checking on the mother's um, health and well-being, and she's providing any necessary tests or an offering support and advice to women during their pregnancy. Midwives also support women through their labour and birth, providing information and lots of emotional support. They monitor the woman's progress in labour and also monitor the baby's heartbeat and helping the woman to assist the birth of her baby. After the baby is born, the midwife then cares for both the mother and the baby and also the partner involved as well. And that can involve assisting with breastfeeding to help the, the mother to breastfeed her baby. 
maybe to show her how to bath her baby, how to change those smelly nappies, and also perform newborn screening as well. Midwives can work in many different settings, and that can include the maternity units around Ireland, in hospital, maternity hospitals, community health care centres, or it could be as an independent self-employed midwife um, working in the community or as a home birth midwife as well. So next slide, Suzanne, please. So as the other, my colleagues have gone through their programmes, this is very similar, just to give you a flavour of what the student midwife journey is. So if you can see along the bottom, year one to four. So in year one and two, it's mostly about normal midwifery. So you're learning about uh, the basic midwifery skills, such as doing abdominal palpation to assess the growth of the baby, um, doing anatomy and physiology, learning about how to take vital signs, blood pressure, temperature and pulse, learning how to communicate with women is really, really important um, for midwifery. And there's aspects of psychology also involved in the first year as well. You learn a lot about labour and birth, normal labour and birth, and how to support women during their labour and during the birth of their baby. And also very much the role of the midwives in promoting health as well, the well-being of, of the mother. Second year then moves on to looking at the woman and postnatal care of the, of the woman and of the baby and more about the specialist role of the, of the midwife as well. You also do shared modules with um, the children's in general students, the nursing students and mental health students on patient safety, microbiology, pharmacology and you also have an opportunity to do an elective module which can be any module across the university. In year three to four then, where you'll be looking more at the complex pregnancy, complex labour and birth, and babies that may, may be sick and how to, to care for those babies. You'd also have shared modules um, with, again, the other disciplines on ethics and legal sociology, and again, more opportunities to take two elective modules. Year four is about learning how to manage obstetric emergencies. So if there was an emergency um, with a woman having her baby, that you would uh, learn how to manage that. And then about preparing you for professional practice, preparing you for your internship, um, which is part of year four. Next slide, Suzanne, please. So again, like the other programmes, you're going to learn use, um, through lectures using scenario-based learning, problem-based learning, tutorials, workshops, using presentation skills. Um, we do a lot of e-learning and online activities as well. And you can see in some of those pictures, um, using the computer labs, the lecture theatres, that's the library at the bottom left, and then the skills lab and the bottom right. And that's some of our previous students that have learned how to do some suturing skills. And that's me there um, showing how to do neonatal resuscitation. Next slide, Suzanne, please. As I mentioned, you'll also do a lot of learning in the um, clinical skills lab. And this is important because it helps you to, to learn skills and it helps you to develop your confidence in those skills and to prepare you for going to practice out to practice clinical practice, that you'll have practiced those skills in the clinical skills. And all of those pictures that you're seeing in front of you now are all of our either current or previous students that have been with us here in UCD during the midwifery program. Next slide. So in terms of the clinical placements on the BSE midwifery program, so your clinical placements will predominantly be in the National Maternity Hospital, and you can review what the National Maternity Hospital on www.nmh.ie. It's one of the busiest and largest maternity units in Europe, um, and it has approximately between eight and 9,000 births per year. Um, so it's a very, very busy hospital, and I train there myself. In second year, you also have an opportunity to spend either eight weeks in either Wexford, Kilkenny or Mullingar maternity units. And then in fourth year, it's a 36 week paid internship, which is the same for all of the programmes, um, nursing and midwifery programmes. You spend 36 weeks out in your core maternity, ho uh, maternity hospital, which would be the National Maternity Hospital. Next slide, Suzanne, please. 
During second and third year then, this is when the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland stipulate the requirements that you must, um, placements that you must complete to um, register with them as a midwife. So for example, in between second and third year, you would spend four weeks in a neonatal unit in, in Hollis Street. And you'd have spent four weeks um, got on a gynae ward. You'd spend two weeks in the high dependency care and that's split between St. Vincent's Hospital and the National Maternity Hospital. And you also have an opportunity to do a two week elective placement, which is of the student's choice as well, but it must be maternity related. Next slide, Suzanne. Lots and lots of opportunities during the programme. And again, these are all of our either current or previous students. So there's opportunities again, like the other programmes for an Erasmus, so you could spend a semester over in another um, European country. There's opportunities for um, fundraising for different charities. Some of our students have presented or attend conferences, midwifery conferences, plenty of awards up for grabs during the programme as well. And the middle photograph of some of our um, previous students who've received awards, academic awards for uh, achieving the highest grades on the programme. Lots of our students volunteer to be peer mentors, and that's a really important support mechanism um, for our students in that, you know, as they've moved through the program, that they become mentors to, to first years, to you as maybe as a first year coming into the program, because as the other um, my colleagues have mentioned, it is quite overwhelming at first becoming into such a large university. And there's also opportunities for debate, debating as well. Um, and again, achieving uh, academic, uh, highest academic grades and more awards as well. Next slide, please. So at the end of the programmes and successfully completing all stages of the programme throughout the four years, you will be eligible to achieve your degree from UCD, but also be able to register with the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland as a midwife. So in essence, you're getting two things. And um, there's next slide, Suzanne, please. There is lots and lots of career opportunities for uh, midwives, registered midwives, who so continue as a registered midwife. And um, with the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland, you can work in a hospital or community setting. You've opportunities to work abroad in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. And we've had lots of our students um, go to those countries and then return to us again. You could be a clinical manager. Um, you, uh, again, like the other programs, you have opportunities to become specialist midwife, be it in diabetes, maybe in ultrasound uh, scanning, um, or a bereavement midwife. Uh, you may like to specialise in breastfeeding and become a lactation consultant, or maybe become like me, a midwifery lecturer. Uh, you could also be a self-employed community midwife or a, a GP midwife, where you're a midwife working um, in a GP scheme. Uh, or you may like to become a midwifery researcher either. So lots and lots of opportunities there um, for uh, midwives. We are on social media, so do please follow us if you're interested in Midwifery. Um, we're at UCG Midwifery. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And next slide, Suzanne. And today we're actually putting on a further questions and answers. So if you're inter really interested in Midwifery and like to talk to us a little bit more, myself and Liz, and we're going to have Sabine, one of our students, um, live on Instagram from half two today. So just follow us at UCG Midwifery. Um, share it with your friends if they haven't been on, if they're not on this webinar, do share it with your friends and come and join us and ask us any questions that you may have. So half past two today at UCD Metrophy on Instagram. Next slide. So that's my presentation and please ask any questions that you might have and I wish you the very best of luck in whatever your career choice might be and I'm delighted to have been able to speak with you today. Well Thank you so much, Lorraine. Um, I'll go into some Q and A. Um, uh, Catherine, if Catherine's there, this might be the might be the best person. How much chemistry is in the course? Okay, um, the chemistry that is in the course is part of those modules that said scientific principles. So there's only a couple of hours of pure chemistry. 
but it's taught from as if you've never done chemistry before, because we recognize that most of the students in front of us do have not chosen chemistry as one of their leaving cert subjects. So it's taught as if you've never done it before at a very basic level, but enough to move you forward and be able to understand then all around food and um, different properties of food. So it's not, you know, anyone can come in without having done any chemistry. Great, thank you. Um, somebody asked, what does, what does the academia mean? So maybe for the, the lay, I suppose for students in, in the audience um, who may not be aware of what that is, would one of my colleagues like to take that question? Okay. All right. I'll just say. Sorry, thanks, Catherine. <laughs> just Sorry, academia. <laughs> Sorry, academia just means um, studying uh, further subjects at a further level, at a higher level. So it's really just about the study of any type of subject at a higher level. Okay. So we've. I'm going to dismiss that. We've answered that question. Um, Peter, this is a question for you, I think, or maybe one of the mental health students who may be with you. What made you want to go into mental health nursing? Yeah, for me, it was quite simple. I, I went into nursing quite late. Uh, I'd been offered apprenticeships in metal fabrication. So I had done some welding. I had worked as a truck driver's assistant. I had done uh, forklift truck driving. I'd done lots of different things. But what I realized was that I really found that I cared about people. And um, I didn't want to be working in an office. And I wanted to feel that I was doing something that was maybe of benefit to others. So for me, it was very personal. I, I realized that I wanted to give something back. And uh, I, I didn't particularly want to be crashing through double doors into general units shouting stat stat, as was happening on ER on television at the time. But I was more interested in the psychology and the motivation of what made people behave in the way they behaved. So that's what affected my choice. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question here, and maybe one of the students might be the best to answer this. Um, are there any misconceptions about midwifery or any type of nursing that students should know about before choosing the course? Course, not course. Uh, I don't. I don't mind taking this one. Um, my name is Dean, and I'm a second year student midwife of the BSc midwifery program. Um, and a lot of People told me when I was going into midwifery that it's just about delivering babies, but it's so much more than that. Like it's, it's like looking after women throughout their whole pregnancy, offering breastfeeding advice, and um, nutritional support, nutritional support and emotional support throughout their pregnancy. Um, and like midwives are there for some of the most joyous and challenging moments in a mother's life. So it's not just about delivering babies. It's so much more than that. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Sabine, your midwife, is there anyone who's a nurse who might have a... Uh, scroll down through maybe... Yeah, one um, was I kind of realised when I was going into it, a few more friends and stuff, and was just saying that, like, oh, was a nurse there kind of, like, looked down upon, and, like, you do kind of, like, they're underpaid and stuff, but when you, when you first go into it, you kind of start realising that it's not just kind of, like, the money aspect, it's been, like, by the patient's side, Throughout, like the whole journey of their like also being in hospital and then they get discharged at the end if you get me so I thought that was kind of like the being the advocate for patients you can't really speak for themselves is kind of what I do really enjoy and like it wasn't just for as I said the, the money you have things of that like if you get me I get you that's cool thank you Shane um for the midwifery students I think there's two here uh, have the midwifery students liked their course so far I'm going to say that, I'm sure it's a yes, but I'd like to hear from them, maybe. Definitely. Well, for, I definitely have, anyway. I don't know about if Arfa, Arfa wants to take this one. No, yeah, Arfa. I have. Um, just, you know, adding on to what Sabine said about that core misconception, I honestly came in thinking it was just about delivering your baby and that was it, but there's so much more, so much more, and I'm really loving it. Thanks, Arfa. Um, okay, would it be better to train as a nurse because of the competition for places on midwifery degrees? Do you know the midwifery team want to answer that? 
I'll take that one, um, Suzanne. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a very common question that we get. Um, I suppose up to when I was training up to even 12 years ago, you had to train as a nurse first before you could do become a midwife. That has all changed now. So if you really, really, really want to become a midwife, um, you can do the degree course. The thing is, I suppose there's a can be a difference between the points, I would say. Um, often the points for, for nursing can be slightly lower than for midwifery and for children's in general nursing. So if you really feel you really want to be a midwife, sometimes it can just take that little bit longer, but that's okay. So go do your nursing first, maybe, and then come back to us and do your 18 months uh, midwifery. But if you feel you're going to get the points and really, really want to be a midwife, it's very, it's very different to nursing, um, then look to do the BSc midwifery course is what I would recommend because it's four years as opposed to five and a half. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm conscious we've gone quite a bit over time and we'd like to show the video as well of our labs. Um, Justin, I might just ask your advice. Can we type some of the answers to these questions and, and will that be available to the participants then? Um, we can type them or uh, we can we can come back to them um, through, uh, we have, we, we, we can type them up while the video is playing there, Suzanne, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah we can do some of that if that's okay. Um, Suzanne, Suzanne, I'll type some of the midwifery. I can see a good super. few midwifery here in front of oh, me, great, so I'll okay. type away here. That's great. Thanks, Megan. So maybe what we'll do now is we'll go into our virtual tour and we'll uh, try and answer all the questions in the, in the question and answer chat. Welcome if that's okay. to the Clinical Skills Labs. This specialised learning facility provides students with the opportunity to enhance their nursing and midwifery skills in a risk-free learning environment through practice-based and hands-on education. The Clinical Skills Labs are an integral part of the UCD School of Nursing, Midwifery and Health Systems and aid the delivery of skills to undergraduate and graduate students. The Clinical Skills Labs consist of six teaching rooms, a treatment room, a sluice room and three equipment storage rooms along with an audiovisual recording and editing hub. We have a wide and varied catalogue of mannequins and models ranging from low to medium and high fidelity simulators to assist the delivery of a skill and aid the development of scenarios so that we can transfer training in all strands of nursing and midwifery. The purpose of the Clinical Skills Labs is to facilitate students' clinical learning in nursing and midwifery and it provides a safe and realistic environment for students to practice, experiment, make mistakes and learn. It facilitates the opportunity for students to recognise gaps in their knowledge and experience and identify their own learning needs. The simulation wards are about presenting theory in a practical, real-life scenario and facilitates open discussion and we encourage student involvement in problem-solving tasks. We place a great emphasis on active learning. We also actively engage with our clinical partners to ensure alignment between our skills teaching and the needs of the nursing and midwifery professions. Simulation education is a bridge between the classroom learning and real-life clinical experience. We offer a scheduled, valuable learning experience that may be difficult to obtain while on clinical placement. Our teaching strategy is used to mirror, anticipate or amplify real situations with guided experience in a fully interactive way and allows for consistent training and evaluation in areas such as technical and non-technical skills, teamwork and professionalism. Simulation can facilitate a range of learners from novices to experts. Beginners can gain confidence in a controlled, safe environment, while experts can practice to perfect a skill without causing harm. Using demonstration in the clinical skills labs, the facilitator performs the task step by step, allowing the nursing and midwifery student to observe, and it enables them to carry out the task with guidance or, and are independently under supervision. During the demonstration, the student is informed of all relevant information as to why this approach is best practice and includes problem solving, therefore creating an effective way to assist students in understanding important concepts and principles while offering hands-on inquiry-based learning. Thank you, Justin. Um, we still have a few questions to get through. Um, I suppose we could spend, maybe if it's okay with the panellists, if they're available for the next 10 minutes, we could go through the rest of the questions and hopefully get them answered and if anything else doesn't we can maybe follow by email or something afterwards would that be okay super thank you okay um 
All right, Suzanne, I have a class coming up, so I'm going to duck out at this point. That's fine. Thank you so much. All right, and, thanks. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, okay, here's a quick question. Can you do a placement abroad from midwifery? Um, uh, will I answer now, Suzanne? Yes, please, yeah. yeah. Okay, so can I do a placement abroad? At, at the moment, we're looking into a placement abroad. We did have one in Sweden. Um, so we're looking into another one. So by the time you come onto the course for a BSc midwifery, we should have one set up. So there will be opportunities to study abroad, yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next question, is the internship based in one location for the full duration of the internship? And I think it is, but I'll leave it over to program directors maybe to correct me there if I'm wrong. So again, for midwifery, yes, the internship for midwifery would be entirely in the National Maternity Hospital in Dublin. And in general, it is also um, within the whichever the matter or St Vincent's Health Healthcare Group. For a sorry for a CNG, it will be between the Crumlin Hospital, a Matter Hospital, and St Vincent's Hospital. They'll they'll be rotating. Um, one of the common questions that it is worded in a couple of different places here is how are how is it decided where you go on placement? Now, I presume people are talking about whether you're going to be allocated to something like Vincent's or the Matter for say general and CNG nursing because with CNG, for example, you you're you're it with Cromlin plus one other. Um, and what happens for those, that is allocated based on um, preference. So soon after the CAO offers go out, the students are asked which would they prefer to, and we try and allocate people to their first preference. Um, it's not always possible. There may be a small number that wouldn't get their first preference, but they're both excellent hospitals, so. Okay, so. I will take care of those questions. Um, this is on just for midwifery because I mentioned Kilkenny, oh, Wexford and Mullingar um, for a second and third year students. Uh, yes, we do try and have a look and usually because we're a small, it's a, the BSc midwifery is a small group, 21 students usually, um, students get to kind of, we try and get them to allocate themselves um, and, and choose themselves, whether they go to Wexford, Kilkenny or Mullingar. And for example, we have, we tend to get a good few students from Wexford, and so they would get to go to Wexford um, maternity unit. Um, so yeah, we try and best we can, as best we can. It doesn't always work out, but we do try as best we can to allocate students that might be nearer to home or whatever. Okay. Great, thanks Lorraine. Uh, somebody's asked what the gender ratio is in all the courses. I think we've done a lot of work on that as a school lately, and I, I want to say, is it about 12% male? Yeah. Balance female. That's correct. It's about 11, 12. Yeah. We've never had a male on the BSE midwifery program in the last 12 years or whatever since it's running since 2006. So maybe if there's not any males in the in the audience, you might be the first. Uh, so we've answered that question. Um, this is probably uh, one for our colleagues and for our students. Um, do you experience many unfortunate cases and if so how do you cope so maybe we'll ask the students for their perspective on this because i'm sure after placements they've seen things would any of our students like to take that yeah hi i'm nina i just recently finished second year and yeah because you're in an environment where unfortunately bad things can happen you do have to cope with them but you have to remember that you're not alone um, even when you're done with your training and you're a staff nurse even then you're not alone and um, everyone on the ward or wherever you are when this happens they know that you're a student and they know that it's not easy and very often they take the time to talk you through it whatever has happened so never forget that there is always support um, back to that question where someone with Eve was asking if it's a collaborative or competitive atmosphere it's very collaborative because we have to keep each other safe not just ourselves we have to mind how everyone else is doing and when something bad happens we have to come together and help each other so um, really that's one of the best easiest ways to cope as a student is 
say, yeah, this wasn't easy. Can we talk about it? And people, people do help. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Nina. That kind of links into one of the questions about students finding clinical placement tough in or overwhelming in the first year, but it sounds as though it is supportive and, you know, I'm sure there are challenges to it. I don't know if any of the students who haven't spoken already would like to maybe speak a bit more about that. You can't see any hands up. Shane, you look like you're I was like, do you want to repeat the question? Sorry, I didn't uh, get yeah, there. It, yeah, it's do most students find the clinical placement in first year overwhelming slash tough? Uh, well, it's so like the first two weeks, not to you, whether it like kind of starting everything that's new, it's a new environment. It's like, it's, um, it just kind of, yeah, it gets like a small bit overwhelming, but like they have, we have um, CPCs, so basically they're kind of like people, uh, the clinical placement coordinators, basically they're kind of like, are like parents almost like in, when we're on place and space, they look after us and they actually come and visit us every like once in a while in the ward and make sure we're getting along well. And we're actually going, um, we'll see, we actually have preceptors that we follow, like all the nurses that we follow for the like the duration of our um, of our placement on that ward. Basically, we kind of like them are allowed to go on to um, what's like the normal, more general nursing stuff or midwifery stuff as well. Um, but like, not actually the first two you get a bit was like eerie and stuff because you're a bit like you're a bit shy and stuff but then you start getting into the ring um the, the yeah. with the most of the things that on the wards and you're getting more comfortable with the staff and everything so you get it just kind of um yeah it's kind of gets a lot easier as you go along but the first placement now she's gonna be tough but after you get past the first two weeks you'll you be fine super thanks shane um Okay, um, I think we've answered quite nearly all of the rest of the questions. There are a small number of nursing students, I think, come from Northern Ireland. We do get some. Um, I don't have the exact ratio or percentage of it, but we do get a, a number of students from the North. Sorry, um, Suzanne, there's a question about what is the pay like? Um, I would recommend if you go to the INMO website, and that clearly highlight the pay range from the staff nurse all the way up to the different scale. Um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a good resource. If anybody want to know a bit more about nurses pay, I would recommend uh, go to the INMO website and they do have a, a full list of pay. Super, thank you, Suja. Um, I've, did you do, let's see. Um, are there, I think some of these are midwifery questions. So maybe Lorraine and those and the midwifery team, you might want to take some of those onto the Insta Live. Can you maybe answer some of them there? Would that be okay? Um, uh, we've studied abroad, I think we've answered that. Gender ratio, we've answered. Um, we've answered questions about the higher diplomas and the bachelors. Um, there's a question there about collaboration between the general nursing student and the CNG students. And I think we've heard that yes, there is. They share some modules together. The general nursing modules will be taught together. That, and then obviously for the children specific modules they're with the children's nursing class. Okay. Um, uh, the course costs for the four years. So the registration fee, I think, for all of the undergraduate degree programs, I want to say is 3,000 euro. Um, so that's per, for the four years, and obviously then with C&G, it would be for another, another trimester, I think it's another half, another half year on top of that. That's that. And... Uh, somebody has asked if there's a difference between an OBGYN and a midwife. Am I very? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I think I might have I might have typed the answer to that. So yes, an OBGYN is a doctor, is a is a medical doctor, an ops guy, uh, medical doctor. So yeah, there would be a big difference. Uh, whereas a midwife is a, a midwife. So um, the oh, the ops guy doctor would have to become a doctor first and then they specialised in, in obstetrics and, and gynaecology. That's great, thanks Lorraine. 
Um, and then I'll just take this as a final, uh, so it's two final questions there. Do we stand and plan, to, plan on starting lectures online for the nursing courses due to coronavirus? And I think that there is a plan that we will be delivering some of our content online and we will have some face-to-face -face time. So I think for the first trimester, it will be blended. Um, and after that, I suppose we're, we're waiting to see if we, we'll be working towards the public or, you know, working with the, the public health guidance on that. Now, I don't know if any of my colleagues would add anything else to that. Okay, you happy with that? And then a final question, is there a difference in work between nurses and nursing assistants? I'm sorry, Lorraine. Sorry, Suzanne. The nursing assistant, I think they meant by healthcare assistant. And so that's my understanding. So in order to be qualified as a healthcare assistant, you just need a fee tech course, which is a you know a six weeks a training course. That's my understanding. But being a nurse, you have to have general nurse, you need a four-year training program, and a CNG, you need a four and a half year training program, which is rigorous training, include theory and practical. So it's a very different, and also to be a qualified general nurse and midwife, um, you know, you need to be uh, registering with the nursing board of Ireland, and we call it an NBI. So it's important that you get uh, you achieve your competency to become a nurse, and you will be registering with a professional body to get the status as a nurse. It's very different. Thank you so much, Seja. Um, I think there must be more questions appearing in the chat. Uh, can you go into public health? The answer is yes. So if you're a qualified uh, nurse you, or midwife, you can go on and study a graduate diploma in public health nursing and become a registered public health nurse. That. And do we think all points will go up to more people resetting the leaving cert and applying next year? And I don't know how my colleagues or the students feel about this, but I think I really don't know. Um, the points are always dependent on the number of places that are available and the number of people that apply for them. So we are very strict in our number of places uh, that are available because obviously, as you've heard today, 50% of your time, you're going to be in clinical placement and the clinical placements, they have to be able to support you safely so they can only take that money, in a, you know, a certain amount of numbers. So um, I honestly don't know. But we've, we'll take that as, as answered. Um, and I'm conscious that our midwifery colleagues now need to leave because they're going on to the Insta Live. Um, it's okay, just, I'm, I'm staying here um, oh, staying for the there. moment. Liz has gone to do the Insta Live, and I'll join her in a few minutes. Okay, so in that case, there was one final question. Was there one final question? No, no. I one. might, I've typed the answer there, I think. Oh, that great. Was, yeah. Okay. Um, we still have, uh, I think, almost 90 people in, in online joining us. This is really fantastic. It's the first time we've ever done this. Um, I just, first of all, I would like to say a huge thank you to Megan, Claire, Shane, Sabine, Nina and Arafa, who are students who helped out today. They're amazing. Really, really, really good. Uh, give you the, you know, the, the, real, the real truth. Yes, Catherine's right, a big bullet bus for you guys. Um, my thanks to Lorraine and Catherine and Peter and Suja who outlined each of the programmes. Um, so good of us for you guys as well. Thank you so much for that. And Justin, huge thanks for keeping the, the show on the road. <laughs> and to Grania who is in touch with all of our uh, students. Um, so huge thanks to that. And to all of the participants, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as I said, this is the first time we've done something like this and we'd really like your feedback. So you'll be getting an email um, just with this and there'll be a short survey. It'll literally take you 30 seconds to fill it out, but it would just be really helpful for us if we ever need to do something like this in the future. What would, um, what works, what didn't work? Um, was there something you'd like to hear more of? Any of that. So um, on that, I'm going to say goodbye and farewell and thank you so much. And again, thanks to all our students and staff who helped out. So really lovely to meet you and see you all. Thank you.